Hello everyone, I'm delighted to join with you today. My name is Jane and I'm the Relationship Manager working across the East Midlands with our churches, schools, supporters, communities, volunteers and groups. I would like to share with you today a short update on how you, our supporters, through time, money and voice, have helped to make an incredible difference to the lives of our young people. Alongside our 80 projects working directly with young people across England, we also run campaigns with the aim of bringing about policy and systems change, which can have an even wider impact on the lives of children and young people. The children and young people that we work with today are in a very dark place. Our amazing project workers ensure these young people are supported and empowered and that their voices are heard. Last year we worked with an incredible 10,000 young people through these direct services and projects. Throughout the pandemic this work has continued and in many areas it's increased. Practitioners have found amazing ways to adapt and what has worked well in these difficult times has been taken forward. One thing that was highlighted was the digital poverty that's been going on with our young people and we've worked hard to distribute tablets, computers and provide data for young people to ensure that they can stay in touch with our support workers and reach out when they're in danger. Now I know the last year has been difficult for all of us, not just our young people, and we're all hoping to an, an end in sight for the pandemic. It feels really different this time round, doesn't it? Darker evenings, less opportunity to get out and exercise, and I know we're all hoping to be able to see our loved ones soon safely. There's a hope that the new vaccine will provide, provide protection, but hope is not about wishful thinking. It's about a confident expectation. Our overarching mission for this decade and the decade ahead is that our supporters will be standing with us to fight for hope. But sometimes in our young people, hope takes a battering. Sometimes it's hidden by doubt, aggression or mistrust. And sometimes it's barely hanging by a thread. But we know it's there. And that's why we do everything in our power to restore it, protect it and strengthen it. We are building hope in the young people who need it most through our campaigning and support. And we will not rest until we've created a society built for all children. Where hope is alive in every child, we can start to celebrate. Today, I want to focus on a particular area where hope is needed more than ever. Child criminal exploitation. County lines is a form of criminal exploitation where gangs and organised crime networks groom children to sell drugs. Children as young as seven are being groomed to traffic drugs from major cities to towns and rural areas. By the time they realise what's going on, they are trapped. If they try to leave, they are threatened with violence and death, not just against themselves, but also their families. Last year, we were approached to advise on a county line storyline in the soap Hollyoaks, because they wanted to understand more about criminal exploitation. Our practitioners met with scriptwriters and researchers, offering them an insight into the grooming process, ensuring that their storyline is realistic. We also met with cast members and their parents and some of the adult cast to advise how they might feel and react on screen as the exploitation takes hold. There were several things we wanted Hollyoaks to get across. The behaviour of children in, who are groomed in this way may change, for example. They may go missing, skip school or lash out. They may have unexplained money or gifts. Too often, though, the warning signs are missed. Children are treated as troublemakers, especially if they're caught with drugs. They are labelled as criminals rather than victims of exploitation who need help. We want Hollyoaks to present the problem to the public. We want parents and teachers to understand the impact of a lack of awareness can have on a, ch on a child. We want viewers to see that young people are victims of this cynical grooming which escalates 
the situation where they're scared to escape and scared to seek help. You might ask, isn't this for the police, government, councils, not a soap to ensure children are protected from exploitation? And yes, it is. They need to do more. That's why we work to ensure professionals, including police officers, social workers, teachers, are well equipped to identify children at risk and offer support. However, parents, friends, teachers um, may be best placed to spot grooming. So the more people know about county lines, the better. We hope that by tackling this serious subject, Hollyoaks will give viewers uh, from children and families to professionals and anyone who encounters young people a better understanding of the signs and risks of criminal exploitation. As an organisation, we've also uh, created a video to help raise awareness. The video, A Thing Called Hope, which was shown as a TV advert before Christmas, is also available on YouTube and it focuses on the story of a young boy called Rhys and the journey of a crim uh, child criminal exploitation. The Hope Meter is shown throughout the short clip. It's at an all-time low when Rhys is arrested by the police. At the police station he encounters a children's society project worker. Gradually Hope rises. He is then seen being supported through the traumatic process he is going through. Um, I can share with you at the end of this video a link to that advert. So what direct support are the Children's Society to give in, giving to young people caught up in county lines? One way is through our Disrupting Exploitation project. This service makes children safer, gives them a better understanding of, it, of exploitation, improves their relationship with family and friends, teaches them what healthy friendships are and helps them to rebuild trust. 75% of the young people we work with reported feeling safer after getting involved with this project. We are also campaigning to create awareness of how to spot the signs of child criminal exploitation. Our Look Closer campaign works with the National County Lines Coordination Centre and British Transport Police to encourage members of the public to learn the signs of child exploitation and to understand how to report it if they're worried. We focus nationally on public spaces like bus and train stations, fast food outlets, roadside services and hotels, places where young victims of exploitation could be visible. Early last year, we visited train stations throughout the East Midlands, working with National Express in Leicester, delivering training to hotels in Northamptonshire and spreading the look closer message to the general public. During a week of action, there was significant engagement from the public and private and charity sector organisations across England, Wales and Scotland. Our work with the National County Lines Coordination Centre so that successfully led private sector companies such as Uber, Stagecoach, Megabus, National Express and Eurocar to agreeing to adopt the campaign. Due to the success of this campaign in the East Midlands, it's now launched nationally. Through our award-winning project with the police, we trained over a thousand staff working in custody suites. We trained uh, custody officers to build a rapport with children, identify risks early on and take the right steps to keep each child out of custody in future. And above all, to treat them like victims they truly are and not criminals. This is called systems change work and helps to improve the systems that children and young people come into contact with. With everything we are doing to ensure young voices are heard, their experiences and stories are fed back to shaping these programmes. On our work with child criminal exploitation, one of our project workers reflected, a lot of these children are targeted by criminal gangs because they haven't got a family or security. They are made to feel part of a family by these gangs. They are groomed with gifts and affection, but soon the abuse starts and the child is trapped in a cycle of horror. 
We have encountered children who are deeply affected psychologically from abuse. However, it's not just physical and emotional abuse which is, uh, of which the effects are awful. Victims are often transported around the country, taking them away from the family support they may have left. Young people who are groomed are manipulated and controlled by their abusers. And as part of this grooming process, the gang will make children mistrust social workers and the police. Snitching is about the worst thing a child can do. The victims will be scared of telling on someone because of the repercussions for them and their families back home. My role is to build a trusting relationship with a child any child who is a victim of criminal exploitation. Project workers like me do this through constant and persistent support for that young person, so that they don't feel like everyone is giving up on them. That might be meeting up with a child for a coffee or a chat, or dropping them a text or giving them a call to keep in touch, so that they know they're not alone. As well as this, we also help educate victims about the grooming process in criminal exploitation, helping them to understand that the media can glamorise this environment. Most importantly, we safeguard and protect these young people. I work with them to create a safety plan which helps them prevent abuse from escalating. In some instances, a young person may come to me having been threatened with kidnapping, serious violence or even death. In order to keep that child safe, I work with other agencies such as police, social services, other charities to share information that will ensure this child is moved to a place of safety. We are pioneering in that area and uh, leading the work with child criminal exploitation across the UK. We are in a great position not only to help a young person's emotional and mental well-being, but also to influence and inform different services that work with these victims by educating other professionals to better support young people who are affected by exploitation. We can help disrupt the cycles of abuse. And as you can see, a key part of our work is recognising that children are victims of exploitation and need help and support from dedicated professionals. Our aim as a charity is that we can empower the young people we work with to build hope for a better future. With all we do, young voices are at the heart of our organisation. For example, our young trustees and participation groups across uh, our different services. We even have a campaign which is led by young people around separated children. Having been through the process themselves, they wanted to change the future process for other young people going through it. And I'd like to just finish by thanking you all for watching me virtually and for standing with us as a charity as we seek to empower hope. Each and every one of you Thank you for supporting young people through fundraising, through raising awareness, through volunteering. Um, and if you are interested in learning more about any aspect of our work or our resources, please do visit our website www.childrensociety.org.uk or you can get in touch with me directly. Thank you.